of Numbers chapter 13. Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Uh, I, I, in, my, in our Sunday school, we were talking about spiritual growth. Uh, spiritual growth. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, a lady yesterday. Uh, I've, I've, I know her. Um, she's somewhere between uh, friend and acquaintance, but she's family uh, through Jamie's side. Um, and uh, real, real, uh, real salt of the earth, uh, her, she and her husband. Um, and she works um, at an, uh, an addictions program. And helping people. She sponsors five uh, ladies right now. And I asked her a question. I said, can I ask you something? She said, yeah. I said, what, what's the thought process behind um, people who get the victory? You know, they finish the program, like uh, Reformers Unanimous or AA or whatever the case. And they say, um, uh, whatever the conversation goes, maybe you've seen it on TV, <coughs> heard it on TV, whatever the case. And somebody says, um, oh, I'm a recovering addict. And you go, oh, well, well, how long have you been clean or sober? And they say, well, I'm 25 years now. And you go, well, 25 years? I mean, you pretty much have it whipped, don't you? I mean, if it's been 25 years, you're not a recovering addict. And I, and I kind of, and she kind of chuckled at that. And she said, yeah. She said, that, that's, a, uh, that's funny that you should ask, blah, blah, blah. But she said, the thought behind that, the thought process behind that is uh, never arriving, always growing. Never arriving, never. So it's not, because I asked her, I said, isn't it like, doesn't, isn't that like a victim mentality? And she said, no, 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 it's actually the opposite. It's a, I'm always growing mentality. So yes, I'm 25 years removed from this. It's something that did happen, but it's something that I confronted. And instead of ignoring it or uh, pretending it didn't happen, it's, uh, uh, no, I'm 25 years removed from that. And I have another 25 years to go. You see, it's a, a, a growing always growing. I said, it's funny. I said, that's, that's pretty neat. I said, that, that makes sense now. Cause I always scoffed at that. Uh, but it's very much the Christian journey. Um, I am whatever it is. Uh, let's see, 2001. I am 22 years removed, uh, from, uh, I'm a recovering sinner. Amen. <laughs> My sins are in remission. Uh, and, and it's, it's spiritual growth, never necessarily arriving but just continuing, continuing over and over and over again. And a good, uh, a good start towards spiritual growth is achieved when we, um, uh, uh, I, I get so frustrated and I, I hope, I need to just pace myself here because I, I hope to relay this in the message. Uh, we have to accept the challenge to obey God's commands to grow. I had a conversation with these people at the table yesterday and I said, um, uh, I was able to, share the gospel with them and tell the God, tell them exactly what the gospel is over and over and over again, the word believe, 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 and explained all these different things. And I said, I'm sorry. I said, I know I seem like I'm going at, you know, a thousand, you know, uh, uh, 9,000 RPMs here. I said, so I'll scale it back. I said, but it's, it's just exciting to me to be able to explain the gospel to people. And they go, well, I've never heard like I never heard that before. Or I, it's always been different. It's always been works. It's always been this. And I told him, uh, you know, there are people, they, they get saved, you get, you get born again, but nothing comes with salvation besides a guarantee uh, on, your, on your part. Nothing comes with salvation besides I get to go to heaven uh, on Jesus' dime. However, the possibility for a, a changed life, a, 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 a life that's accepted in the Father that can be changed and transformed and, and um, uh, completely uh, turned around comes from obedience to the Bible. When you obey the Bible, see what happens when you get saved and you want to spiritually grow People look at what you have or look at where you are and they say, how can I get to where you are 
in my Christian journey? Or how can I get God's blessings like you have on your life? Why does it seem that God is blessing you, but he's not blessing me? Why does it seem like God is with those families and those people, but he's not with me? Well, you can't, you got to look at them and say, why? Why is he? Well, they've probably paid some dues. They've probably prayed some prayers. They've probably served in some ministries. They have probably have been faithful. They've probably have been a part of a give-it-all and sacrificial giving. They've probably uh, probably have loved God and loved their neighbor as their self. They've been obedient to the word. You cannot get God blessings from your father and be a disobedient child. It, 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 it won't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Now, you may sit back and go, well, I know brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. At least I think they're brother or sister. I, th they're, I think they're saved, but they're not living like it, and their life seems to be going better than mine. You cannot look at that and think that God is missing it. So here you are. You're like, man, I'm, 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 I'm going to church, and I'm being faithful, and I'm... I'm I'm obeying in the areas that I know to obey, and I'm trying to spiritually grow because I want to obey in the, the full capacity that I possibly can. And here I am looking at these people over here, and they're living up the worldly life, and it seems like everything's going great with them, and I'm struggling. Okay, well, you have to run your race with patience. You have to accept God's way. You can, there are no shortcuts to success in, in, in the Lord. Psalm 1-1, one, one, um, uh, about uh, not, not uh, uh, how does it start off? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Or, uh, yeah, standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in, the seat of the, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh, and it's saying, God, the book is my, the book is my, my guide for life. Uh, there are, um, uh, growing up, there were um, games, uh, books for like games, cheat codes, and there were like levels in these like uh, video games. And it would tell you, all right, this is what you can expect in this level. And these are some of the things to look for. And you'd have this book that would tell you. So it was like a cheat book, but you'd go buy it. Um, that's back before um, the internet was a thing. Everything you, for video games now, you have to have the internet. Uh, back then, it was you didn't need the internet. They were like they, they built the game, and each level was harder than the last. And there's all kinds of things uh, to, in it where it has evolved now. But you'd go buy this book and say, "Okay, I'm now on this level, and um, I don't know what to look for. I don't know how to beat this thing. This uh, this this villain is too hard to beat, or whatever the case." So you'd go buy this book, and it would tell you what to look for. All right, so here you are in your Christian life. Here you are in your journey, and you get to level one. What's level one? Salvation. You got saved. What's level two? Baptism. Level three is faithful church attendance. All right, so you start going faithfully to church, and you're like, okay, what's the next level? And not only do you have the book, but you have people in the church, the pastor and elders in the church, who, who already have the book, who are on level 99, and they go, no, this is the way. Watch out for this. Follow me. I'll show you the way. I'll show you the way. I'll show you the way. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They want to flip back and go, how can I skip all the levels and get to where the, the pastor is? Well, I'm not that far ahead of you, so don't. don't. <laughs> uh, 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 how can I get to where, you know, uh, the pastor emeritus or the pastor's wife or Brother Hiles or Brother Hiles has, has passed away. You don't want to get to where he is yet. Uh, you want to live your life, amen? <laughs> but you have to accept the challenge to obey God's command. You have to accept the challenge to obey his command. The Bible says to grow in grace, grow in grace. And then um, and next you've got to believe that through Jesus Christ, you are capable of growing. A lot of people, I, I, there are some people that come to my mind, excuse me, <laughs> come to my mind right now who are young Christians who don't believe that they are capable you're not, but the Bible says that you can do all things through Jesus Christ. And I talked, to, I said this to Connie yesterday in our conversation because she brought that up. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I said, yes. And I said, even attempt. And she looked at me, I said, we can attempt to do things through Jesus Christ. Not because sometimes we can't always do it because we're not there yet. We're not there yet. But the more you attempt, the more you attempt, the more you attempt, the more you attempt, you'll have a breakthrough. You will have a breakthrough. 
Um, uh, but it says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. So set, set both of these, be, uh, um, um, your behavior and functional goals that are described in our scriptures as growing in grace and doing them through Christ. So we have to strive to have like a, a Christ-like behavior. It just, it, I don't know what gets it. And don't, for, don't, don't worry. I, I haven't forgot our, 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 my text here, Numbers 13. It just, I don't get it when people don't take a second to say, is this what Christ would do? Is this what Christ would do? Is this what, folks, I, I'm telling you sometimes I take a step back and go, Man, Jesus, I'm already like trying to be extra nice here. And you want, and according to what I think Jesus would do, it would be even more meek than I'm already being. You know, sometimes we do things and say things out of spite. And you go, that's not what Jesus would do. Jesus wouldn't do that out of spite. You know, somebody was trying to, somebody was trying to, um, Stir up trouble. Somebody who knows better. And they were saying, oh, da, 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 and basically trying to stir the pot. And I just said, I don't think Christ would do that. Jesus wouldn't do that. And we're called to be like Christ. So you go do that all you want. You'll stand and answer for yourself. I'm not. And don't, don't drag me into it because they kept wanting to yak at me. Rah, 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 rah. And I'm just like, look, no. I'm waving you off. I'm not hearing what you're saying. No, you go do it. I'm not doing it. Christ, a Christ-like behavior. Do we exemplify a Christ-like behavior? So what do we do? We have to seek to determine and to develop our function in our body like Christ. The Bible, the Bible says to glorify God in our members. Glorify God in our members. That's why I, 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 uh, I don't swear. I said, I think I said, um, what did I say yesterday? I said something in front of Lincoln, and I said, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't, don't say that. Uh, sure, the world, he's going to say that. You know what I was telling him when I told him, when I told Lincoln, hey, I know what you just heard me say, but don't you say it? No, he, Lincoln was a mirror. I was looking at Lincoln, but really seeing myself and going, I do not approve of what I just said. And I think the word was like, I don't, but I said like, that sucks or something. That's bull, you know, I didn't. Brother Jackson, that's not, that's not bad. Well, it's not good either. It's not becoming of a pastor um, in front of my kids. Uh, I don't say freaking. I've tried to stop say flipping or stinking or uh, dang or heck or darn. You're like, Brother Jackson, don't be so, um, uh, don't try to be so good. No, what do you mean don't be, try to be so good? I'm trying to clean up my act. <laughs> I want to be removed from that. Why? Because I want to try to be like Christ. I want to be like, try to be like Christ. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything that Christ wouldn't do in my body, in my members. Uh, uh, and, it, and it's a difficult thing to do. Now, what do you do? Create good habits that slowly but surely help us reach these goals. Create good habits that slowly but surely help us reach our goals. Now, I, I want to talk to you tonight about not just spiritual growth, but your attitude in your spiritual growth. Attitude, 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 attitude is incredibly important. Attitude, not altitude. It's not how high you fly, it's how you fly. Uh, it's, man, an attitude. Um, my friend, uh, uh, Brad McKee, uh, I can't even pronounce the, the syndrome, the disease that he had. It's, a, uh, it's named something French, GBS, Galarian Bazaar is what it was. Uh, he was basically just having a fine day, and then his, his immune system attacked his nervous system, and it crippled him, crippled him. Uh, his eyes were only fixed straight. He could only look straight. He couldn't. He has a patch over his eye. He, it, all his motor functions. Now, he's back to, he's back to, to living, um, and he, he's home now. He's doing much better, um, and... Um, uh, uh, it, but the whole time, he said he had some frustrations, but if you see his videos and his, his things like that, and he, he's not like the cleanest talker, he, he drops in a couple words here and there, and I said, that's not Christ-like, Brad. Uh, and um, uh, it was his attitude through the whole thing. 
His attitude. His attitude. His attitude. His attitude. Um, Kirsten, her attitude. What's your attitude about what you're going through? Our attitude determines so much about what we're going through. Create good habits that slowly but surely help us reach these goals. I told Jamie when we were living in the basement, it was, it was difficult. It was difficult because there's no closets. Everything's kind of just stacked up on top. And I just, ah, the frustration and just, it was what it was. It wasn't home, but it was where we were. And God knew that we were there. And I told Jamie, I said, I'm not complaining anymore. I'm, I'm going to try to have a good attitude. Now, I did complain about stuff that wasn't necessary. And usually was the boys doing it, leaving around water bottles. There was water bottles everywhere. <laughs> Throw them away. Uh, but it, regardless, keep a good attitude. Keep a good attitude. Keep a good attitude. And I said, Lord, I, I'm going to keep a good attitude. No matter what, I'm going to keep a good attitude. About whatever's going on, a good attitude. So I created a good habit because a habits, uh, habits change our behavior. Habits change our behavior and habits that utilize our functions in the body of Christ, which are the assembling and participating for spiritual growth to continue. Continue, continue, continue. However, it requires maintaining a positive attitude. Maintaining a positive attitude. I, it's hard for me to look out on the congregation tonight and see people's faces that should be here, that are not here, and it's hard for me as a pastor to maintain a good attitude about those people, not that I'm mad at them or, or angry, but there's a frustration that stirs or fosters because being in the house of God and hearing the word of God and being able to sit down with your pastor for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes after the service saying, Pastor, I got some questions. Can you help me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. But they, they, if you won't go to where the help is, you, help can sometimes come to where you are. The pastor will pay you a house visit. The pastor will come see you. The pastor will see you in the hospital. The pastor will text, text, mess, to text you. The pastor will reach out. But if you will not, listen, I'll throw out a life preserver, and but come to the boat. A lot of people, they finally make it to the boat and go, whew, okay, let me dry off, and then jump right back in. And you're like, what? The boat's here. You ever heard that joke? Somebody was stranded out in the ocean. They were on a life raft, and he prayed the whole time. Isaiah, he prayed and prayed and prayed. Dear God, send me help. Oh, dear God. Or, uh, um, yeah, dear God, save me. Dear God, save me. Dear God, save me. And a boat came by and said, hey, do you need help? He's like, no, I'm, I'm asking God to save me. Okay. And they left. Oh, dear God, save me. Oh, God, save me. Oh, God, save me. Another boat came by, hey, we're here to help you. Wah, wah, we're going to help you. And he's like, no, I'm, God's going to save me. Guy ends up dying, drown, drowning and dying. Gave up. And he got to heaven and said, God, why didn't you save me? He said, I sent two boats to help you out. Why didn't you get on them? Uh, sometimes the answer to prayer is like the way obvious one that's right in front of us. Dear God, I need a sign. There's a sign right out front that says Three Years Baptist Church. Dear God, I need a sign. There's signs everywhere. Signs everywhere. I need a sign. Your pastor will preach one to you this morning if you'll, or this evening if you'll just go to church. And I get it. I'm not trying. Please don't understand. I'm not dismissing um, hard days and, tired and just whipped and, and, and health issues and things. I, I, I get all that. I, don't, I know my crowd. But folks who could and don't, uh, folk, I, I get it. I get it. I don't share my, my uh, God doesn't allow you to go through things that you go through to keep stories to yourself. But I get it. I understand what it's like, what it's like not to have m gas money and you have to go, well, do I go to work tomorrow or do I go to church tonight? It is better to do, it is better to do what's right. What's right? Well, I need a gas because I got to go to work because I have to make money to feed my family. Yes, but if you put God above all that, you'd be surprised. You go to church and somebody slips $20 in your hands. Oh, Brother Jake, no, no, no. Do right at all costs. Do right when it comes down to God and Jesus and Bible and church and prayer and soul winning or whatever else, choose the latter. No matter what, choose the latter. Now you'll fall, but get back up. Habits, 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 habits for a good attitude. Um, so you've got to believe that your effort is worthwhile. A lot of people come to church, they don't think their effort is worthwhile. That's why we clean the church haphazardly, and I prepare a message haphazardly, and 
Uh, we sing haphazardly and we just kind of eh, halfway because we don't think our efforts are worthwhile. We don't think God's really going to reward us or God's really going to do anything, but he is. He is. He's going to. But it should encourage us to persevere through difficult times because he will come through. He always has. Now, uh, Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Um, this is um, uh, the children of Israel are going to spy out the land of Canaan. They're going to spy out the land of Canaan. I want you to look at verse 33. Verse 33. And I'll reference the chapter a couple of times. So just go ahead and keep it open, I suppose. The Bible says, And there, were, uh, and there uh, verse 33, uh, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which, uh, which come from the giants. Uh, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Now what had happened is they said, Here we are, we're going to the land of Canaan, we're going to send out 12 spies, and... Uh, uh, through the chapter and says these are the ones the sons of and this is who they are and this is what they're about and we're going to send them out and uh, uh, they're going to spy out the land of Canaan so they spied out the land of Canaan and said wow look at all the stuff but whoa look at the giants grapes you know as big as basketballs and a land flowing with milk and honey it's a, a, a an incredible land of opportunity and of plenty and um, uh, it's a wonderful place to be. However, there are giants in the land, and we are grasshoppers in their sight. These are the people that, God, that, that saw God do incredible miracles in the wilderness. These are the people that, that uh, witnessed incredible things at the hand of God and through his man Moses and through Aaron. These people saw incredible things, and... They saw the negative instead of the positive. They didn't say, okay, hey, li listen, listen, this, it's a great land, but Moses, there's, there are giants in the land. However, if God did this and God did this and God did this, then surely God can help us beat those giants. There's, an old, there's a song that's saying, um, uh, 12 men went to spy on Cain and 10 were bad and two were good. 10 were bad. Whoa, 10 were bad. Yeah, they had a sour attitude about the whole thing. And two of them were like, we can take them, guys. We can take them. We can take them. See, folks, 10, 10, folk, 10 of the guys, they didn't believe. They didn't believe they could take the land of Canaan. Now, what's the importance, and I want to be quick here, the importance of a positive attitude. The importance of a positive attitude. It's illustrated to us in this chapter. They show us, man, if you have a good attitude, these 10, the 10, their negative attitude discouraged the rest of Israel. The 10 came back and said, oh, no, it can't be done. Oh, no. And the rest of the people, hundreds of thousands, or I, I would think the, some folk, I believe it was uh, 3 million, if I have my numbers right, 3 million. I know some folks have said it was about 600,000. Um, but I believe it was more than that because of 400 years and the generations and the numbers of the sand of the sea and, and, and whatnot. Uh, I believe it was in the millions. But they came back and said, oh, it can't be done. It can't be done. And the, the group of negative always discouraged the people. You think that's, a, you, you think that's um, curious that our news stations are the same way? We don't have news stations that walk around going, hey, everything's Okay. It's going to be okay. The news stations are going, ah! <laughs> drugs in the White House. Do you all hear that? Cocaine in the White House. Um, uh, 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 nuclear war, Ukraine, North Korea, China, Russia. Ah! And the rest of the country and the world is going, oh, Armageddon's just around the corner. Well, where are the ones that are saying, no, folks, God's still in the, God, the God of the Bible is still present today, but they're negative. The 10 guys, uh, the, 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 the ones that had a negative attitude discouraged the rest of the people. And it led Israel, the attitude, the contagious attitude, by the way, your attitude is contagious. It's, just, it's, it's, um, it's uh, more contagious than the flu or than a cold or anything else. It is, your attitude is contagious, super contagious. And it led Israel to complaining and to rebelling against God. It led them all the way uh, uh, um, uh, into Deuteronomy. It led them to complaining against God. Uh, numbers, oh, I, I suppose I'll read, uh, where does it say? 14.4 here, 14.4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. 
Let's go back. Let's get rid of Moses. Let's forget Moses. Let's get a captain and let's go back. Let's, let's get out of here. Let's, let's leave. We don't want to do this anymore. And it led them to rebellion. And it uh, 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 prompted them to not believe in God. How many folks, how many times has God delivered you or supplied for you? And then here we go, we, we, we come to this, this new level in life that seems a little bit more difficult to beat than the last level. It seems a little bit more difficult this time around. But we, we lose our faith in God on each and every level we get to. Here it is, level number, uh, level number one, the ten plagues in Egypt. Level number two, running from the Egyptians and being stuck between the Egyptians and the great cloud between the Egyptians and the Israelites and the Red Sea, and God opens the Red Sea. Oh, what about manna raining from heaven? And a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to lead them, to guide them and water from a rock and so on and so forth. Defeating of their enemies and victory over victory over after victory after victory. And now, now this time, here they are. There's giants. Oh no, what do we do? We have a bad attitude, a bad attitude. Folks, we can't, we, a bad attitude will kill you. And not only will it kill you, but it'll kill the faith and the hope and the belief in the people around you. And it resulted in many people dying in the wilderness. So it led them, it prompted them to not believe in God, which was, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And folks died from it. So when negative uh, attitudes are al allowed to develop in us, when we begin to foster them and yield to them, we stop believing in God and in ourselves. I can do all things through Christ. It's a double belief. I believe that through God, I can do anything. I can do it because the spirit that dwells inside of me. You have to have a positive attitude, a positive attitude. You have a, a, a going through things, through work, uh, through finances, through health, uh, no matter what it is, a positive attitude. I'm, I'm going to get the victory. I'm not going to stop. It doesn't matter. I told Lucas today, I said, there's this word called relentless, relentless. Uh, if I fail a thousand times, I will attempt a thousand and one. And if I fail a thousand and one, I'll attempt a thousand and two. You say, yeah, but at what point don't you quit? You, you don't quit. If you believe what you're doing is the right thing according to God and according to not your heart, because your heart is deceitful above all things. But if you're saying God is my partner in this endeavor in life, I want to be righteous. I want to do what's right. I want to please God with my life. I want to do the right things, the good things, the, the wholesome things, the helpful things. I, I want to make a difference in this world for Jesus Christ. I want to do that. And I believe I can do all things through Christ because he's the one that strengthens me. When we stop believing, where we have a continue with a negative attitude, and I've had it. I, man, I when I I tell you what, if I get on a negative attitude, I am a, I am not fun to be around. I am not fun to be around. Ask my wife, ask my kids, ask my mom and dad. Uh, you get when I'm on a negative negative attitude, and who's worse than me? My sister Sarah. She's even. Right, Brother Dan? <laughs> Brother Dan's like, mm-hmm. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what, Brother Dan's guilty of it too. Brother Dan, are in the, we're in the same boat. Tell you what, when, it's like, dude, I'm not in the mood. And we're like, God's good. We're like, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> God's going to make a way. Yeah, 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 I heard that before. <laughs> and you're like, what are you saying? Listen, a, bad, a negative attitude, whoo, man, it's a spirit. And it's a difficult one to get over because you're like, I've got this bad attitude in me and I want to be chipper. I want to be up. I want to be happy. I want to be positive, but I'm just not seeing the light, not seeing it. I, what has worked for me is getting alone with God in prayer and going, God, I'm in a bad mood. And so instead of regurgitating my attitude on everybody and I can't be positive, I'm just going to be quiet. Brother Pip comes in and tells me a joke. <laughs> that was good, Brother Pip. That was good. Not that it wasn't funny. That was good. Or, or Deacon comes up to me. Huh? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love you, buddy. It's patterns. Put a smile on my face. <laughs> you are the same way. You're human, flesh and blood like I am. But man, when you have a, a, a sour attitude, when your attitude is bad, 
your altitude is getting ready to mayday, mayday, mayday. Your attitude, your attitude, your attitude. Man, it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. The importance of a, of, a, of a positive attitude is we've got to recognize the danger of a negative attitude. If we want to have, uh, uh, if we say, uh, we know that uh, uh, the importance of a positive attitude. It lifts up, especially as a man, a husband, and a father, and a pastor, it lifts up the attitudes of people around me. The leader was, if George Washington was always walking around going, we're not going to make it, guys, we wouldn't have a nation. It was the attitude of a leader. It was the fortitude, the relentlessness, and the faith of a leader and of our leaders, of our, of our of children, of your parents, of your, uh, uh, of your company, or whatever the case is, attitude, the attitude. So when, when, we, when, we, uh, uh, when negative attitudes are allowed to develop, we stop believing in God and in ourselves, and we stop trying to do what God wants us to do. We just, we, we quit. We quit. Uh, there's folks um, that, that this is the exact scenario with them right now. They have a negative attitude, and they've stopped trying to do what God wants them to do. And, in, and what they're doing is, is, especially men, they've discouraged them, their families. They've discouraged those around them. They've discouraged, listen, I, I, I point to several people that I know, that you know, where the, the, the husband and the father has got a negative attitude, a bad attitude, a bitter attitude, and not only has he stopped believing in God and in himself, and not only has he stopped trying to do what God wants him to do, but he's discouraged his family. He's discouraged his family. Men, we cannot discourage our families. When we sin, we don't sin alone. Our sin directly affects other people. Directly affects other people. We fail to reach the goals God has placed for us. I don't want to fa fail to reach those goals. I like hitting goals. I like hitting goals. All right, so there's your da the danger of a negative attitude. So here's the value of a positive one, and we'll be done. Um, uh, think of, a, a, I won't have you turn there, but the positive attitude that I pulled from the Old Testament is out of the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 4, um, where uh, Nehemiah goes back and he rebuilds the walls of Jerusalem. The Bible says the people had a mind to work because they believed in what they were trying to do. They believed in, you know, I was walking up to the church this morning, this, uh, this evening, and I thought, um, I always pray for the folks who are coming in, uh, uh, for safety, and, and always glad to, be see, to see people. And I thought, the, the thought crossed my mind. I don't know if it was from the Lord, myself, I don't know if it was from the devil. Uh, 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 or, or whatever the case, uh, the thought about how many do you run? How many do you run? Jake, are you ever going to be a successful church and running hundreds or maybe even a thousand people one day? And I thought to myself, and, and I had a conversation with myself, and I said, well, that's not the mark of a, it's not the mark of a, a successful church. The mark of a successful church, now we get excited by numbers and crowds, there's life, there's something going on, right? An attraction, of course. I go, that's not the mark of a, a, su a successful church, not according to the Bible. The mark of a successful church is, is it becoming like Christ? What's our goal? Are we being like Jesus? Are we telling people about Jesus? Are we reaching the lost? Christ will build his church. Uh, God Almighty knows exactly how many are in the future for Three Years Baptist Church or how many aren't, whatever the case. It's not our, it's not our job. We can have promotions. We can have all those things, and, and, and that'd be, it's all fun. Draw on the numbers. Uh, but that's not what it's about. And so as I walked up, of course, as a church leader, I, I want to impact as many as I can. I want to have people crowding in to hear, not me, but to hear the word of God. Uh, that's why I, I, I want that. But... If I don't have that, am I going to have a bad attitude, a sour attitude? I can tell you when my attitude was probably the lowest, not when it was Lucas and me and Brother Dan during COVID. That wasn't when my attitude was the lowest. That was a challenge to me. That was like, okay, let's do it. My attitude was the most sour when we ran the most. So it's not altitude, it's attitude. Because we were running, still, Pastor Jackson was here, his influence was throughout the place, and we still had, 
whatever we were running, 200 or whatever. And I started preaching. Uh, school was still going. We still had bus routes. But, you know, people were starting to fall out without your leader, you know. Uh, my, my attitude was like, dude, I don't want to do this. <laughs> no. My attitude was bad. Could you imagine what would have happened if my attitude was, no, I, don't, I can't look back on that because it, it, it wasn't and it didn't. And I can't look back and go, what well, could have been? But just strive to never be that way again. And look back and say, man, what if I had a positive attitude? And by the way, I, I don't want to stand up here and tell you I was lying the whole time. You know, Brother Pip, during 2012 to 2015, uh, I was just put on a show. I wasn't. Um, it wasn't until I started preaching until church was over and somebody walked out and they were crying or they say, Brother Jackson, you don't know how, how, how or, or Jake, you don't know how well that helped me today or that was so good. And I always walked out going, Holy Spirit of God, that was you. It wasn't me because my attitude's lousy. I remember one time I had a 45 minute notice to preach. And I on purpose, Miss White, on purpose didn't get stuff ready because I told God, I'm not doing it. God was like, oh yeah. Jake, I need you to do it. And I'm like, I don't have anything ready, anything prepared. And he'd be like, oh, I have sermons up in my office. So I'd go try to find, and I can't read his handwriting. I can't read his stuff. He has like symbols and letters and like mumbo jumbo slashes and asterisks. I can't read that. It's like hieroglyphics. I can't read that, let alone preach it. Uh, so I'd pull out books. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's books upstairs. Somebody gave me a, a book that's got, uh, I think Billy Sunday's on the front of it. And it's like 500 sermons or something like that. Little mini sermons. And I'd pull things out of there and get some scissors and go snip, 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 and then sit down and go, okay, uh, read, open my Bible and go, okay, that's a good point and write something down. Right. And you know, the more time that I spent in the word of God and in scripture and in those things, it like, it fostered a good attitude in me. And by the time I came down to church, I was like, bless God, we're going to do something here. <laughs> Why? Because I did what was needed to foster a good attitude instead of a bad attitude. Folks, I'm telling you, you have them just like I do. My bad attitude, she's sitting right back there. Uh, my bad attitude. Uh, the value of a positive attitude, dear, um, is, uh, okay, let's, let's, let's quickly go. Uh, the people had a mind to work, Nehemiah 4. The people had a mind to work, and it helped them overcome the ridicule from their enemies. It helped them overcome feeling like their city was destroyed. It helped them overcome all these things that they were going through. Imagine not even being wanted by the invading army. The invading army came and sacked Jerusalem and took everybody that was worth taking, taking and then left you behind. They're like, yeah, we don't even want you. <laughs> You're worthless. You're old. You don't offer us anything. We don't want you. And left them behind. And here these people were going, man, they took everything good in our city, and this is what we're left with. Now we got these stinking jerk rulers, and man, they're making everything so hard on us, and life is just terrible. And then this guy comes rolling in with a positive attitude and goes, let's rebuild the wall. And their people are like, hope. Yeah, let's do it. Let's rebuild the wall. So they all had a mind to work, and what ended up happening? Great things ended up happening. It helped them overcome. It helped them overcome, and it led to rebuilding the walls. So when positive attitudes are maintained, what happens? We continue to believe in God and in our ability, opposed to not believing in God and our in, 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 uh, God's ability. We, ha we continue to believe in God and our ability to serve him. I can do it through Christ. I can do it through Christ. Somebody told me, well, I'm not coming back to church until I can come back to all, where all, I was all the way. That makes zero sense. Like, that's, that's like one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. So Brother Jake, that, that's kind of mean. I think it's incredibly foolish to say something like that. Well, I'm not going to come back to church until I can get back to where I was all the way. You won't get back until you were where you were until you come back to church and sit down and shut your mouth and sing songs and say amen and then find some little sliver of somewhere to serve. It's like um, uh, when I tore my labrum in rotator cuff. And um, uh, I hit personal records at the gym at Velocity before, uh, I, um, uh, before I went in for surgery. And when I got out of surgery, Isaiah, I said, I'm not going back to the gym until I can lift 315 pounds and deadlift 500. What? <laughs> you can't do that. You have to start, all, you have to start somewhere. 
Start, bro, start somewhere. Here's one for you. Read your Bible every day. You'll never get to be a bus captain. You'll never get to be a Sunday school teacher. You'll never get to be a, well, to be a PA man, you've got to be a smoking, fighting, cussing, drinking. <laughs> oh, man, that was good. Um, you know, considering those things, he's got a pretty good attitude. Um, and the only reason why he does those things is because he's married. Never mind. Uh, okay, let's move along. Positive attitudes. So, so we continue. So when we have a good attitude, uh, when we not have one, when we maintain a good attitude, you may, you're either feeding a negative attitude or feeding a positive attitude attitude. When we have a positive attitude and maintain it, we continue to believe in God and our ability to serve him. When, when I go out soul winning, I don't believe in my ability alone. I believe in my ability through the savior. Secondly, we keep trying to do what God wants us to do. They say that you can't keep a good man down. You can't keep a good man down. Man, come in here tired. Come in here broken. Come in here not necessarily with a negative attitude. Sometimes you're neutral. Sometimes you're like, I guess my attitude depends on what happens to me today. Tell you what, if you get into the word of God and then get to with the people of God and the place of God and hear the word of God, it'll give you a good attitude. It'll give you a good attitude unless the preacher calls you dumb or something. So we keep trying to do what God wants us to do. Do what God wants you to do. You keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. I told Lucas today, he and... um. Uh, Houston, they were trying to flip me off this, uh, uh, man, we cut the grass, we all got fried out there for a little while, and um, man, I was just pouring sweat, and uh, so uh, we went swimming, we went swimming, and I was on this big inner tube uh, raft thing, and laying on it, and um, Houston and Lucas were trying to flip me off of it, push me off, flip it over, flip it over, and uh, they were individually trying to do it, and uh, we kept telling them, no, come up with a plan, Teamwork it. Jamie told him, look, it's about leverage. It's about this, da 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 Teaching him a couple things. And Lucas ended up getting discouraged. Lucas got discouraged. See, he's holding, folding his arms. Ah! He's folding his arms like that right now. No, he wasn't. Uh, he, was, um, he, was, he was discouraged. Discouraged, discouraged, discouraged. And I told him, I said, son, it's relentlessness. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Over again. Now, if you don't want it, if you don't want it that bad, just quit now instead of getting all the way to discouragement. Just if you don't want it that bad, but if you really, truly want it, then don't stop a relentlessness. And it's the trying to do the things that we know God wants us to do. I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt. I don't know if it's the demons of hell or, or, or what it is, but I know that somewhere somebody says three rivers ain't going to make it. Three Rivers ain't going to make it. Pastor Jake ain't going to make it. He ain't, I'm not calling him Pastor Jake. There's somebody somewhere. There's a scoffer. There's a, there's a naysayer. There's a negative person out there somewhere saying, oh, he won't ever be a pastor. He'll never earn my respect. I don't want your respect. I want his. That's all that matters to me. Uh, the Bible says that he's not a respecter of persons. He's a respecter of his word. And if we respect his word and get in his word, then God will respect you. Um, now, um, uh, 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 I'm not trying to earn people's respect. I'm not trying to get through. I'm not trying. We're not trying to prove everybody wrong. We're trying to keep a good attitude to continue to try to do the things that we know God wants us to do. That's what we've got to continue to do. And when we do that, we encourage those around us. We encourage those around us and overcome those who would do, who would discourage us. I don't, I don't recommend um, movies for people. I don't, I don't do that. But um, there's one movie that, I, I, I uh, have always, it just stirs something in me, one particular scene, and it's, um, uh, I will not prop this guy up. I, I, won't, I won't say the movie, I won't say the guy's name, but it's an independence movie. And um, here they are, they're fighting the British, and uh, uh, here the, the colonials are turning around and starting to run away, and the guy picks up the flag, and he starts charging the redcoats, saying, go, 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 move, move, charge, charge, charge. And, of course, it's somber and slow motion, and the music is playing, and his comrades' eyes are fixed on him, and they're saying, charge, you know. And, every, and, and it's one guy, one person with a positive attitude, with the mindset of, yes, we can, we're going to win, we're not leaving this battle, 
battlefield without a victory. We're staying. We're going to win. And what happened? People were looking at it. One guy's running the opposite way, sees him with the flag running the other way, and hears the general say, push forward, men. And they all turn around like, oh, we're not retreating? Okay, let's go. And they took the field. You see, it takes one person with a positive attitude to encourage those around him. To be an encourager. Be an encourager. Folks, be an encourager. Um, so we encourage those around us. And we can overcome the things that discourage us. Uh, the things that discourage us. And lastly, we ultimately reach the goals that God has placed in front of us. God gives us goals. We reach them. Uh, I was talking to Connie yesterday at the table, and we were discussing things. And I said, do you ever feel like you're in the, like the testings and trials of life and you miss your exit? Like, oh, man, I got to learn this lesson again. You see, God does not skip you a grade. God doesn't say, okay, you're in my classroom, but, you know, I got a new wave of students coming in, and I got to kick you. So what's one plus one, Billy? And you say, oh, two and a half. And God's like, close enough, get out of here. God doesn't do that. You will pass God's, God's classes and God's tests. Otherwise, you don't pass them, and you will continue to, you'll continue to try them. Uh, and, and, I, and I said that, I said, you know, I feel like I'm on these, these tests scene, you know, these tests, this, this, and I miss my exit. Could you imagine being on 469 and needing, uh, whatever the Lima exit, I think that's 311, uh, uh, the Lima exit, and then you missed it and you had to go all the way to 69 and hop back all around the GM plant and then go all the way back east and then all the way back north and then hop on it and try to get it again. And you're like, okay, it's coming up. 310, 312, where'd 311 go? <laughs> and you're like, I didn't even get a chance to get off of it. Sometimes they have it closed. Sometimes you're like, man, what is going on? Why? It's because God, you haven't reached the, God, the, the goals that God has set for you yet. You see, you haven't reached it yet. You haven't reached it. You have, to, you have to reach these goals that God has set out for us. So spiritual growth, like any other successful venture in our life, spiritual growth requires a positive attitude with it. I don't care if you're starting in business, positive attitude, positive attitude, positive attitude. God will help us reach our goals for spiritual growth, spiritual growth. So without it, we fall short of becoming what God would have us to be and um, it, it throws us off completely. It throws us off completely. So uh, next week, we'll get into uh, maintaining a positive attitude. Yeah, you said, Brother Jackson, earlier you said um, not have an attitude. We have an attitude, right? What kind of attitude is it? When people say, man, you have an attitude, they usually aren't referring to a good one. How do we maintain, maintain a good attitude? We'll get into that next week. So between now and next week, just try to have a good attitude. I'll tell you how to maintain it next week. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for how good you are to us. And um, Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us through Jesus Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father, I uh, ask that you'd help our church uh, to maintain a good attitude, a, a positive attitude. Uh, Lord, I'd ask that you would bless us through your word, help us to be obedient to it, help our path cross the path of somebody who wants to be saved, somebody who's looking, somebody who's been calling out. Lord, I'd ask that you would help us to be ready to give an answer, ready to share the gospel, uh, help us to abound in it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Da -na 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 -na. Na 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 na. No, no, okay, that's it. <laughs>